Welcome Back to Asylum, a podcast from Habibi Works. In this series, you'll hear directly from those seeking asylum in Europe. In our previous episode, we met a woman who dared to step into the unknown, fleeing Afghanistan for an uncertain future in Europe. For this series, she goes by the name Zarina to keep her identity anonymous. She has told us of her painful decision to leave Afghanistan and of her arrival in Greece. For a glossary of terms used in this episode, please read the description. In Ecumenija, we were being in prison for uh, two months and four days because we didn't have any legal paper from Greece. They investigated from us. They took the documents Then they put us in, uh, it was a prison type of place. And I have asked so many times from them what is going on. In the second episode of her story, Zarina shares her experiences from inside a detention centre in the Greek port city of Egomenitsa. I was with my husband, but my place and his place were uh, separated. And I faced so many difficulties mentally. I was not well, I was not comfortable, I was afraid during the night. There wasn't any light. Uh, For me, it was just seemed like a zoo. It was a cabin and out of the cabin there was a cage that you just can move and see around, but you are not free to go here and there. So I was not good mentally at that time. I was totally depressed and I was getting very stressed at that time. So the guard of the base, they helped me and uh, report about my situation to the police and they allowed my husband when I was alone, they were bringing him to be with me. It was totally a heartbroken drama. (laughs) When a person arrives in Greece to claim asylum, they are detained for a mandatory period of 25 days in a registration identification centre. However, the human rights NGO Mobile Info Team has worked with people who have actually been detained for longer. During this time, the Greek Asylum Service will attempt to prove a person's identity and to register their asylum case. If a person is deemed ineligible for asylum, or is considered a risk to national security, they will be transferred to a pre-deportation detention centre. A mandatory detention period is unlawful in both the EU and in Greece. It violates Article 8 of the European Reception Conditions Directive under which member states shall not hold a person in detention for the sole reason that he or she is an applicant for international protection. Yet the new EU Pact on Migration, for which the final vote will be held in April, looks likely to make mandatory detention at Europe's borders a part of every asylum seeker's journey. The Pact says it would aim to process each application within 12 weeks, during which time a person's fate will be sealed. Either they can continue to claim asylum in the EU, or they will be sent to a different country, either in or out of Europe. I was not able to talk when I was speaking with the guard in Nicomanija. I was not able to speak with him. So I start moving my hands <laughs> and some of them became my friends and they were supporting me mentally. They were talking with me at that time. So it was easier for me at that time. And because I knew he's speaking in English, the police authorities, they just asked my favor to help them to take the investigation from refugees who is speaking the same language. So it was a, a bit um, easier for me. And I was asking for them to allow me to take a shower. The police, one of them asked me, what do you want from us? Suddenly he just asked like this, and I just asked of him, I want shampoo, <laughs> I want soap, I want uh, that for females, diaper. 
Then uh, he said, okay. Then he went about uh, half an hour. He returned back with the car and he told me that, let's go out. He bought <laughs> soap. <laughs> there was a bathroom. They just break the door, they lock off the bathroom. They were afraid that she should not do something because I was crying all the time. <laughs> and I was crying at the, at the same moment also in front of the police. They didn't say anything, but the tears just rolling out of my eye. I took my socks and I scraped my, <laughs> my body with that. And every single minute, the women police officer, they just calling me, are you okay? I was saying, that, yes, yes, I'm okay. <laughs> and they gifted me a diaper to use that. Uh, it's difficult for young women, especially about the periods. It's difficult to be in that situation. I was crying. <laughs> I was crying of my, uh, the pain that I had. We didn't have heater inside that place where they kept me. When my husband was hugging me, he was just making me warm like that. It was difficult. I was asking pills for them. Please give me pills. I feel pain. <laughs> so two times in a day they were giving us food. And uh, we had blankets inside. But we had toilet, but we didn't have a bathroom. Then once again, when I asked them to take a shower, and they were saying that this is not a five-star hotel that you are asking to have shower all the time. I just did two times shower. <laughs> yes, leave me. At that time, it was happening like this. I don't know what is happening now with refugees. If the new EU Pact on Migration is to pass, what's to stop more people from experiencing similar levels of violence and hostility as Serena? Research from the Helen Bamber Foundation has shown detention has negative consequences for a person's mental health, and that these risks can be made worse when asylum cases are prolonged. Zarina describes her experiences of moving into the Katsakus refugee camp. When I get released in 2019 and 14th of February, they just released us from the Komanija. They gave us the address of Ketchika camp that you can go and uh, stay there and you can ask the next day, you can ask for asylum in Perama. The way that they guide us, we just follow them. We just reached in the camp, but the camp authorities, they said that this place belongs to the people who are being transferred from the islands. So, because I was new, I didn't know which camp I have to go. Then I went to the asylum service, though it was not at the time that I have to give my interview. I just uh, spoke with them about my situation, that I have been through so many difficulties. I asked them that if they can help us. So they took our interview and they said that we will go in to give you because I didn't have no home, nothing to stay in this uh, city. So at that time they just gave us a paper. It was a Oswise, but it was not an Oswise officially. So they said it can help you to be access in a camp. Then I, I took it and I brought it back to the camp that I have this paper. Then the camp authorities, they told me that you have to ask from Afghan refugees to help you at least for one week that I have to find for you a place where you have to stay. And thank God there was a man who, who was living with his son. He helped us to stay for a week. And then after a week, we asked ASB again to give us a proper place that is belong to us. They helped me. After six months, we take the financial support at that time. But again, there were so many facilities that we can solve our daily problems. And now that is changed. The asylum seekers that were asking for uh, the interviews in 2019, for those who were being transferred from Moria or from Samos, they were in waiting list. They didn't start to take the interviews from them. 
and they were just renewing their oath vices. And for those who just travel from the land, not from the sea, it was easy to give the interviews at that time. At that time for uh, Suris, it was very easy to ask for asylum and gain the documents. But for us as Afghan refugees, it was difficult at that time. They announced that our country is a, a safe country. So now that the situation has been changed, they started taking two interviews. The interview for Turkey and uh, for Afghanistan. Though they know that Turkey is also not a safe country for us anymore. About the authorities in Turkey, they just take the refugees and deport them back to Afghanistan. Zarina spoke of the changing asylum process in Greece. When she first arrived in the country, she needed to have only one interview with the asylum service. However, during the time she was in Greece, the situation changed. On the 7th of June 2021, a joint ministerial decision designated Turkey as a safe third country for people seeking asylum from Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Somalia. It did not provide any legal reasoning for this decision. The safe third country concept is a basis upon which a person's asylum application can be denied. A country is considered safe if it meets a set of criteria which includes the following. That a person's life and liberty is not threatened for reasons of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group or political opinion. That the country prohibits the removal of an applicant to a country where he or she risks to be subject to torture or cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment as defined in international law and also that the possibility to apply for refugee status exists, and if the applicant is recognised as a refugee, that they will receive protection in accordance with the Refugee Convention. But despite being recognised as a safe third country, Turkey's track record is not positive. According to Human Rights Watch, the country does not respect the non-refoulement principle of the UN's Refugee Convention, pushing people back to countries where they face persecution. People are asked all about their personal circumstances during an interview with the Greek Asylum Office. This includes questions on how you came to Greece and why you left your country. The interview also aims to establish if Turkey would be a safe third country for you. After a person's asylum interview, the service will grant refugee status subsidiary protection, or reject your application. Although it's possible to appeal a rejection within a specific window, receiving a rejection means you will be detained in a pre-departure detention centre. A person must pay for any subsequent applications they make to the asylum service. I took two rejections here at that time. While the situation changed in Afghanistan, they also somehow just changed in their process. And now the interviews remain the same, but they take two interviews. Now at least it's a little bit better for Afghan refugees that they can ask asylum here and easily from that time. In this episode, Zarina shared her experiences of detention. After she was finally released and able to apply for asylum, Zarina was instructed to move to Katsikas camp in northern Greece. It was while living in Katsikas that Zarina told us her story. Stay tuned for episode 3, in which Zarina will share her experiences of living inside the camp and explain how it evolved over the four years that she lived there. (laughs) 